This is war map. In Donetsk's direction. To the north of the Avdiivka industrial zone, RF troops successfully cut off the ledge and leveled the front line. Under the pressure of RF army, the AFU retreated. According to data from the field, RF advanced in Pervomeskoy by 1.5 km north of Apina up to 0.5, with a front width of 1.3 km. The AFU counterattacked at Serskaya Okoda and nearby. RF troops are repulsing the attacks. The AFU counterattacks on armor on the streets of Chernyshevsky, Sportivnaya and Sobornaya. RF are holding on. An important clarification. The AFU reported that RF forces occupied the former air defense base. This is not the case yet. The site is in a semicircle, but not taken. From there, the AFU are countering RF offensive on Avdiivka from the side of Apatna. In the Avdiivka sector, on the southern outskirts of the city, the RF armed forces are repelling AFU attacks on Russian defense lines on the approaches to the Kimik micro district. At the same time, the RF armed forces occupied an AFU stronghold on the approaches to the Donetsk filtration station. According to Bild, the Russian army has already taken 10% of the territory of Avdivka, including the industrial zone and a number of houses. In December, the Russian armed forces took control of an industrial zone in the southeast of Avdivka, near the Donetsk Ring Road. And now for the first time they have occupied a residential area of the city. It is located to the west of the industrial zone. There are private houses there. The Russians are trying to advance from there to the north in the direction of the Kimik district with apartment buildings. So far, the Ukrainian armed forces have managed to repel these attacks, reports build expert Julian Rock. He estimates the territory controlled by the Russian armed forces to be 10% of the total area of the city. The analyst notes that in the area of the Donetsk filtration station east of Avdivka, a ledge has formed which is still controlled by the Ukrainian armed forces. Rock reminds that Moscow's original plan was to surround Avdivka from the west, advancing on Stepova and Severno. In the Lyman sector, RF forces are advancing on Terny and Yampolovka. There are significant advances. In a day RF have retaken several positions that covered the approaches to the villages. In the Kupiansk sector, Tabuyevka has become the 36th captured settlement of the Kharkov region. Yesterday, RF troops fought for the heights to the northwest in order to break into Peskanoi, where the AFU retreated. But the AFU were able to push them back to Tabuyevka. Today, RF took control of both the heights and the southern landings towards Peskanoi and Kotliarovka village. The Russian army continues to hold the initiative on most sectors of the front. How will the Ukrainian armed forces act after the loss of Tabivka? The Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation officially announced the liberation of the village, so it's time to think about how events will develop further. From the north in the Sinkovka area, no active military operations with advancement have yet been observed. There are positional battles, typical for most of the front line so there is no need to expect active breakthroughs by the Russian armed forces or counterattacks by the armed forces of Ukraine in this direction. With the loss of Tabivka, an extremely interesting picture emerges. If units of the RF armed forces make their way further towards Peskany, then Kislavka, Kotliarovka and Stepovaya Novoselovka will remain in the semicircle. These villages are located on a hill and are strategically important for the Ukrainian armed forces from the point of view of the combat stability of the defense line. However, there is no talk yet of an immediate withdrawal from positions due to the loss of Tabivka and the hypothetical loss of the kislavka slash kotliarovka line. The Ukrainian armed forces will almost certainly try to restore lost positions, since the Ukrainian armed forces have 16 different formations in this area. These forces, at least for now, have at their disposal a certain number of reserves, approximately up to 3,000 people, the introduction of which into battle can slow down the advance of the Russian armed forces. 
a pullback from positions in Kislavka and Kotlyarovka, for which battles are currently underway, will mean that dense artillery fire and the work of operational tactical aviation of the Russian aerospace forces will be moved to the west and the main line of combat operations may move to the novosinovo slash kurilovka area. Between these villages and the tabivka kislavka kotlyarovka section, there are virtually no boundaries on which the Ukrainian armed forces will be able to provide long-term resistance. In the Kupiansky direction, after a breakthrough in the defenses in the area of Kromolny and Tabivka, the commander of the Ukrainian 103rd TRO Brigade, Colonel Valery Kirko, was removed from his post. In South Donetsk direction, after the capture of the Zverinets fortified area, RF troops are fighting along the forest belt, expanding the zone of control to the west and southwest. The next targets are the a few positions on the Marienka Novomikhailovka road section. This will open the way to the Mashino Stroidal village north of the Novomikhailovka headquarters, which will give fire control over the supply road for the a few garrison in Novomikhailovka. Successful advance north of Novomikhailovka. Menagerie finally came under the control of the Russian armed forces. In this sector, due to the heavy losses of the 79th Separate Shock Brigade, the AFU reinforced them with units of the 23rd Separate Mechanized Brigade. Recently it was transferred to the Avdivsko direction. Part of the brigade is present in the stepovo petrovsky area at this time. In Kursen direction, RF forces are trying to nullify the AFU foothold in Krinky, as well as to knock out the AFU artillery and UV units on the right bank. Two such teams were hit by RF, and there were successes with UAVs as well. It is difficult, because RF military and equipment are the targets of the AFU's FPV drones. Plus the AFU are trying to pressurize RF near Peshtunovka. Ukrainian Resources Report Zeluzny is not going to leave on his own. ZNUA, citing sources, provides details of yesterday's situation. Zelensky personally met with Zeluzny and invited him to leave the post of head of the armed forces of Ukraine. Zeluzny replied that it is the right of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief to decide with whom to work. The general himself did not write a resignation letter and does not intend to do so. Zeluzny was offered to become an assistant or advisor, but he refused. Zeluzny's potential resignation, which has not yet been formalized by a presidential decree, is only the first link in a chain of personnel changes in the command of the armed forces of Ukraine and the political leadership of the country. Rumors about Zeluzny's resignation What is known? Verkhovna Rada Deputy Gonkarenko confirms that the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine Zeluzny announced about his resignation but there is no decree yet. Kirill Budinov was appointed to the post of commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine instead of Zeluzny reports Ukrainian media. The publication country. With reference to the editor-in-chief of the website, censor.net, Yuri Budasov reports that Zelensky has already signed a decree on the resignation of the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine Zeluzny but has not yet made it public, as consultations are underway with foreign partners. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine stated no, that's not true. The Ministry of Defense of Ukraine denied not the dismissal of Zeluzny, but the dismissal of Defense Minister Yumarov. Such news also passed. Zelensky did not dismiss the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine Valery Zeluzny, Presidential Press Secretary Sergei Nikiforov in a commentary to the UP. Ukraine's hopes of defeating Russia are slipping away, Washington Post. It's hard to ignore the despair in the corridors of power in Ukraine. Two years have passed since the start of the war, and the authorities in Kiev still continue to turn to their partners in the West with a long-standing request. Give us more weapons, more help, more political commitments writes WP. The political drama, 
surrounding the financing of Ukraine continues in Washington, while U.S. and EU authorities are meanwhile working on a multilateral plan aimed at ensuring support for Kiev in the future. This policy carries risks when Ukrainians begin to blame their government for the stagnation at the front. Also, officials in the West are well aware that their citizens' patience in financing the war in Ukraine is not endless. In the near future, Ukraine's problems at the front and disagreements in the United States may determine the fate of the confrontation. The West may have already missed its best chance to give Ukraine the opportunity to completely liberate its territory, writes WP. Где у них опорник, братан, ты видишь? Давай, давай, за батыром, братан! Встань! Иди сюда, братан! Давай, Аякс, помогай ему, помогай! 